There's no romance to a quartz watch. It runs off circuits, it runs off a battery. When you have a mechanical watch, you actually wind that watch up and you give that watch its power. You bring it to life. During the 1970s and 80s, the so-called quartz crisis reached a peak and it almost led to the extinction of watchmakers. During the 1970s, there were roughly 1,600 to 2,000 watchmakers in Switzerland. And by the mid 1980s, there was less than 600 watchmakers left in Switzerland because everything was gearing towards the quartz or electromechanical watch. Uh, we talk about quartz watches. They actually receive their power not from a mainspring, but from a battery. The battery has a limited life. The battery is going to run down eventually. There's different variations of this. We have capacitors that will recharge itself. The way a quartz functions is you have a battery, you have a circuit board, and it tells it one second, one second, one second, and it tells that watch to snap off. It's regulated by a quartz crystal that's also influenced, however, by temperature, where as the temperature increases or decreases, that watch will run faster or slower. In the 1970s and 1980s, I wasn't a watchmaker yet. But had the industry gone the direction it was going, I never would have been a watchmaker. One of the more historic watch calibers that was saved actually at the end of the quartz crisis was the Zenith El Primero. Zenith at the time decided to stop manufacturing the El Primero and it was slated for, uh, for destruction, for all the, all the dyes, all the components were just to be cut out and it was to be scrap metal. One person was, is, uh, is instrumental in saving this, and he had the foresight to actually just put everything away in a warehouse and just let it sit there. And at that time, Zenith, they had one of the most historic and well-respected automatic chronograph movements in the Zenith El Primero, uh, but the cost of to re-engineer re it was gonna be far too great until somebody remembered that one person had saved all the components and all the dyes. It connected, led to the rebirth of the Zenith El Primero, which is still in production today. The way the pendulum swings, we saw a turn going one direction to the and which created the quartz crisis. That quartz crisis actually helped bring us back the other way to where today it's the zenith of watchmaking. Uh, watchmaking has never been held to a higher standard. Independent watchmakers have never been more plentiful in producing higher quality timepieces than today. If it weren't for the quartz crisis, bringing it to the brink, letting that pendulum swing one full way, allowed it to come back the other way. And this is why we're enjoying this renaissance of watchmaking today. I'm Michael Michaels, and this is my take on the quartz crisis and its influence in watchmaking today.